Hello and welcome to the Futures Lab. So I've already shown you how to make grey attacks, attacks that deal no damage. But it occurred to me afterwards, I actually haven't shown you how to make attacks that simply appear. And I also want to build in this cool shaking effect into the attack. This could be quite cool even for maybe some jump scare attacks or some creepy kind of gaster hands style quivering around that you have to avoid. But before we get into that, we actually have a glitch that we need to fix. So here's the glitch. Watch our heart moving variable. If I move up and down, it switches to yes, that's all correct. But watch what happens when I press the left arrow. Can you see? The heart moving says yes, but are we moving? No, we're colliding into the box. This also works if I go up into the corner and then press up. Yep, it's saying that I'm still moving. So this is a problem. It's only detecting whether or not we are pressing a movement button and not if we are actually moving. So we need to have a look at our collision code and see if there's a way to fix this. Let's go to the heart sprite and then look around for define move X, Y key. So when we press our movement button, we set the moving variable to yes, then we do the move and then here's the problem. We then see if we are touching the box, and if we have touched the box, we run some collision code, which basically undoes that move. So it looks like we haven't moved. What we need to do is figure out a way of setting this movement to yes only if we haven't collided. So what's the solution? Have you figured it out? We need to change this if then into an if then else. So go to control, get out an if then else. We need this collision code to go into here and this touching box to go into there. We don't need this anymore. And then take this and put it right where the if then used to be. Now, all we need to do is get this set moving to yes and put it under the else. So now, when we press the key, we do the move. If we're touching the box, then we undo that move with the, our collision code. But otherwise, if the move went successfully and we didn't end up touching a box, we set the moving to yes. Okay, that's the glitch fixed. Let's head into our attack code and do the fun bit. We're going to make an appear attack. So go to my blocks, click on make a block, and we're going to type in in capital letters, appear. So let's think about what inputs we want into this attack. Well, the first one we want is a costume input. So let's add that in. Then let's add a label for X, Y and create two inputs, one for the X coordinate and one for the Y coordinate. Then let's add a label for color and add that input in. Now, do you remember that cool shake effect that Napster Blooks attack had? Let's add in an input that can turn that on. So we'll add a label S for shake. We'll add our input for shake. Now, the trick with making an attack appear and not move around is we need to figure out at what point does the attack go away. So let's add in an input for duration. So add a label. Now we could type in D for duration, but we also use D for direction a lot. So let's type in D and then U. Then let's add an input and call that duration. And then finally, let's add in a weight. So let's add a label for W and an input for weight. Okay, that's quite a lot of inputs, but I'm pretty happy with that. Press OK. Let's drag this somewhere where we've got some space underneath it. I'm actually going to drag my define appear to be nearby my define projectile, as I'm going to copy a lot of this code and save myself a bunch of time. Let's copy all of this. Now, some of this might be fine to keep as is, but just in case, let's pull it all out and throw it away and make sure that we've got our um, inputs from the define appear. Keeping those old inputs should work most of the time, but if you ever spell things incorrectly, um, it's very difficult to figure out where you went wrong. So let's just start from fresh. So first things first, I'll go to X and Y. Let's get out an X and a Y. 
Now this point in direction, I'm just going to point in the normal direction, 90, to make sure that it's the right way up. You could even add in an input to change the direction of your appear attack if you wanted to, but I don't want to, so I'm just going to leave mine. Now we're going to set movement type. Well, let's set our movement type not to straight, where it's moving in a straight line. Let's make sure it doesn't move. So you can call this still if you want. I'm going to use the word stationary. Stationary just means something is standing still. Now we need to set the color variable to the color input. Go to back layer. Yeah, I think I like that. If you want, you can change this to going to the front layer, but that's entirely up to you. We've got this switch costume. Let's get rid of it here. Then let's close this gap and we want to wait wait seconds. Okay, so we don't have anything for our shake input to do and nothing for our duration input to do. Now, we could create a new variable called duration, but there's actually a variable that we already have that we use in our spin attack. Do you remember those stars? They start off small and then they grow while spinning. So in our movement type spin, we use this grow variable, which is the amount of time that we repeat this code where we make the stars get bigger and rotate as well. So grow is only one of the things that happens here. It also spins and collides. And this is also the duration of how long this attack goes for, spinning and growing as it does. So we could make a new variable called duration, but I like to reuse variables if they do something very, very similar to each other. So let's rename grow as duration, and then we can use that in our appear code. Okay, so go to variables, right click on grow, rename it to duration, and you should find that it updates everywhere. Okay, so now we're back at our appear code. Let's put in a set duration variable to the duration input. And the number on here will be how many frames the attack will stick around for. Now I've actually just noticed there's something we've missed here. There's a variable that we need to set in both our define appear and our define projectile. Have you noticed what it is? It's the power. We need to set the power of the attack. So I'm just going to decide that the power is 5 for my appear. And let's set the power to 3 for the projectile. We also need to get out a switch costume. I think I over hastily deleted the previous one. And let's get this costume input. Now we haven't gotten the duration or the shake working yet, but let's give this a test because we should have enough to see it appearing. And let's go for a bone. And let's say that it's uh, on zero and zero. So it's sort of in the middle of the screen. Let's set the color to blue. And we won't worry about the rest of that. Let's just click this appear block. Hey, that's appearing. And then of course it deletes itself straight away because it has no other instructions. We haven't programmed anything in for our movement type stationary yet. So the question is now, how are we going to get our shake effect to work? Now we could just program in some random movement, but the problem with that random movement is that probably it will just drift very far away from where it started. Whereas you can see with these types of attacks, they know where they began and they never drift too far away from there. So what we need to do is tie the X and Y origin starting positions to variables and then have the shake work off of those. So we're going to need to make some new variables. The first variable that we're going to make is going to be the shake variable. Now click for this sprite only and press OK. Now we need to make a variable X for this sprite only and a variable Y for this sprite only. So now instead of going to X and Y, we are going to set the variable X to the X input and set the variable Y to the Y input. Okay, we shouldn't need that anymore. Then we'll set the shake variable to the shake input. And at this point, we need to go to our when I start as clone code. 
and we need to create a new if movement type equals stationary. Now our if movement type equals spin is pretty close. So let's right click and duplicate that. Get rid of all the other stuff in the bottom that we don't need. And let's just have a look at this by itself for now. So remember what we call the movement type. I called it stationary. You might have called it something different, that's fine. This set size to 1% we don't need, so we can throw that away. The repeat duration is exactly what we want, and this heart collision we will also need. We don't need to change the size or turn, so throw those away. Now we need to put in some code that will change the shake. So let's get out a set X and a set Y. Now to start off with, let's just set these to the variables X and Y. So now the way that I want the shake variable to work is I want that to be a number. And the number is the number of pixels that the shaking is going to be from its origin. So if we set a shake of 50, then it's going to be shaking like up to 50 pixels away from where it started. Um, but if it's a shake 3, then it'll just be that little bit of vibrating, just like we have here. So in order to do that, let's go to operators and get out a pick random. So we're going to be adding or taking away from the X and the Y. So the lowest number should be minus shake. And the higher number should be shake. So our pick random if shake is three is going to be pick random between minus three to three. So now we need to take these random numbers and add them into our X and Y here. So get out an addition operator take this and put it into the second socket and we can just copy this so that we've got one for x and one for y there we go that should work well now in order for it to work we do have to put it into our when i start as clone code so get this and very carefully put it in right in between some other if movement type equals code make sure it's not sucked up into any of the others Okay, so let's put in that we want the bone to appear at x equals zero and y equals zero. We'll say the color is blue. Um, we'll say that the shake is three and the duration is for 10. All right, when we click this, let's see what happens. Oh, that's cool. So you can up the duration if you want. Let's say duration 50. And we'll see this bone shaking around. Very nice. Now what happens if we increase the shake? Let's increase it from 3 to 30 and see what that looks like. Wow, that's pretty cool. And look who else has appeared. We have a visit from Banshee. Hello, Banshee. Now, before we finish up, I thought I'd make a costume that suits this new appear attack. And at first I thought it'd be kind of cool for like a big hand to appear and just kind of quiver, kind of makes me think a little bit of Garster. However, I figured that seeing as my enemy is the scratch cat, I would actually make it a cat paw. So I'm going to start off by making this attack in orange, just so it's easier to see. Although I might make a version of it where it's in blue and white as well. Uh, we'll see how I feel. I'm just going to make an oval here, and then I'm going to use this tool here to just sort of squish it into that cat paw shape. Okay, that looks good. Uh, now I'll make some little circles. Okay, that all seems a bit wide. I'm going to make that a little narrower, and this a bit smaller. Okay, now I'm going to do some pointy claws. So let's start off with a rectangle. And then I'll use this tool to delete one of these points and move this one. Now we've got ourselves a nice pointy triangle. Squish it down a little bit. Okay, that looks pretty cool. I'm going to call this paw and then O because this is the orange version of it. Now make sure it's not too big. I've had to shrink mine down quite a lot. Also make sure it's nicely centered. Now I've put together some code for a nice attack with this. We set the costume. I put a random number in for X and Y that keeps it within the box. We've set the color to orange and the shake to 10, the duration to 50. So if I click this, let's see what this looks like. Oh, that looks great. That looks really cool. 
Now, we don't have a lot of chance to see these coming, do we? Now, there's one thing that we could do to give our player a little bit of warning. And that is, do you remember the fade in variable? We can set fade in to yes underneath our appear. However, if you do want to set the fade in to yes, remember that the fade in code runs before this X and Y code. So we just need to get out a go to X and Y just to make sure that it fades in at the right place. So let's see what that looks like with the fade in code. Okay, that does give us a little bit more time. Now during the fade in, they will not collide with the heart. So if you like that effect, by all means, keep the fade in code, but that is entirely optional. If you prefer them just to appear out of nowhere, that's also perfectly fine. And that's all we have time for this week. As always, subscribe and ring the bell if to see when the next episode is ready for you. Let me know in the comments what you would like me to do next or if you need any help. And aside from that, stay awesome, be cool to each other and take care of yourselves. We'll see you next time, ninjas. Oh, 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 oh,